we have to be very vigilant, please. So look after yourselves, um, wear your mask, keep the distance and so forth. But I'm glad you came along. It's wonderful to have you here. And uh, it's my prayer that the Lord will touch us and that we will hear His voice and hear His, His message for us. Um, shall we turn to Him and be quiet just for a few minutes, a few seconds? Lord, although we are few, Lord, and we are in a, a strange world, we have come here to worship you. We came to bring you the glory and praises, although we may not sing, just by our presence, Lord. We want to praise your name because we know that you are the Almighty God and there is no one like you, that you are the creator of this world, of this universe, of every animal, every plant and every virus. You are above all. There is no one like you, no one that we can compare you to. Lord, your greatness surpasses everything and it, and it causes us to stand in awe before you, Lord. But even more, Lord, is your love, your love for us. You love us so much that you gave your all on the cross for us so that we may live, live abundantly, I pray, Lord, now that we will experience your presence in this church. Lord, help us to understand. Lord, teach us. Lord, guide us in this world. Please come through your word and touch each and every one here. Thank you, Lord. Thank you that we can be in your presence. To you be the glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. I thought we should listen to another song of the of the dear band. So let's listen to them again, please. Father, we love you, we worship and adore you. Glorify your name all the earth. Jesus, we love you. The Spirit, we love you. We worship and Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah, it's all about prophecy here, 
And uh, in this time that we live in, well, chapter 35, by the way, Isaiah chapter 35. Um, it's all about prophecy, and uh, in the times that we live in, people seem to uh, uh, turn to prophecy, to try and understand uh, what we are dealing with. And I have been taught in seminary that one should be very cautious when you look at prophecy, and uh, not to draw straight lines from the Bible to the present. And, uh, but in this chapter, something strange happens. You see, um, what happens here, the, the first part of Isaiah is all about the year 745 BC. Now, if ever you thought 2020 is a bad year, you wouldn't have wanted to live in 745 BC. <laughs> it's horrible. This is the time that the Assyrians came from the north and they wiped out everything. Um, every city, all the people, the women and children, everyone was slaughtered. It, there was nothing left. Um, they were like locusts, the Bible says. And they came along and they wiped out everything. It was a horrible time. Now, in this time, these prophecies were written by Isaiah to, to give to, the, to the, um, the nation of Israel. And uh, the first few chapters up till chapter 34 is all about doom and gloom. And then suddenly there's this fantastic chapter in uh, 35, Isaiah 35. And uh, this is what we are going to turn our attention to. Um, so let's read it together. Isaiah 35, verse 1. The desert and the parched land will be glad. The wilderness will rejoice and blossom. Like the crocus, it will burst into bloom. It will rejoice greatly and shout for joy. The glory of Lebanon will be given to it, the splendor of Carmel and Shaul. They will see the glory of the Lord, the splendor of our God. Strengthen the feeble hands, steady the knees that give way. Say to those with fearful hearts, be strong, do not fear, your God will come. He will come with vengeance with divine retribution. He will come to save you. Then will the eyes of the blind be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then will the lame leap like a deer and the mute tongue shout for joy. Water will gush forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand will, will become a pool for the thirsty ground bubbling springs. In the, haunts, uh, in the haunts where jackals once lay, grass and reeds and papyrus will grow. And a highway will be there. It will be called the way of holiness. The unclean will not journey on it. It will be for those who walk in the way. Wicked fools will not go about on it. No lion will be there nor will, will any ferocious beast get up onto it. They will not be found there, but only the redeemed will walk there, and the ransom of the Lord will return. They will enter Zion with singing, everlasting joy will crown their heads, gladness and joy will overtake them, and sorrow and sighing will flee away. We read up to there. Um, you know, this morning when I woke up, uh, I had this wonderful place where I stay, and I looked out and saw this beautiful day. It was sort of foggy, you know, there's a slight mist, and I could hear the mist horn for the fishing boats here in St. Helena Bay. And uh, I just realized what a wonderful place we live in. Looking around, seeing the flowers still blooming. This is probably the longest spring we've ever had. And it's beautiful, the flowers, even still now. And um, it's, it's just amazing how wonderful this West Coast can be. Um, even though we are in the year 2020, 
even though it's we are in a time of tribulation and hardship and, and it's scary it's like being in a desert and suddenly the flowers bloom like the text says that's how it is here where we stay um, and now to be back in the church like now and seeing all of you and uh, being together it's it's like a flower opening and new life blooming and awakening of of something new it starts small i know we aren't we are not at many here today but still it's 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 like a flower blooming and i've got this excitement on on me i hope you have as well um something is happening the lord is doing something um the text says that we will see the might of the Lord. Israel will see the might of the Lord. Now Israel is the church. That's us. We will see the might of the Lord. Now in the beginning I said I was taught in seminary that we should not draw straight lines from prophecies in the Bible to the present. But it is, it is exactly what Jesus does with this passage. You know that? Um, if you know your Bible, you would know that uh, this passage is repeated in uh, Luke 7 and also, also in Matthew 11. That's in that story where um, John the Baptist is starting to doubt whether Jesus is the Messiah. And then he asked Jesus, are you the one that would come? And then Jesus replied with these verses. The blind can see, the, the lame can walk, and the deaf can hear. He uses this specific passage here in Isaiah. So Jesus does that. He draws straight lines from a prophecy from 744 BC. And he draws a straight line to his present at that time. So this is all about Jesus. When the passage says, don't fear, don't be, uh, don't be despondent. Uh, Strengthen the feeble hands and steady the knees. Don't be fearful, the fearful hearts. Your God will come. It speaks of Jesus. It speaks of Him. The King of the Church. The Lord of the world. The Redeemer. Our Savior, Jesus Christ. He is God. The God that came. And He draws this straight line towards Matthew. Um, the prophecy uh, becomes fulfilled in Christ. And I want you to, to just take that in a bit. That it is, it is about Him. So when we read this prophecy in 2020, it's not about us. It's not about what's going to happen with the virus and the economy and all that. It's about Jesus. About Him. It's about the living Lord Jesus right now in this church. And here is where I draw the straight line from this prophecy. It's as true as it was in Christ. It's still as true in this day. Because He, that same Jesus, is here through His Spirit. It's true in this church at this moment. For you in 2020, the message is the same as for the nation of Israel in 744 BC. Your God will come, your Savior. He will be here, and the lame will walk, and the blind will see, and the deaf will hear. It's still true. You can hold on to that. Don't become despondent. He says, don't be feeble, um, don't have a fearful heart. Your God is here. Uh, in actual fact, uh, I read the English version here in the national, uh, in the NIV version of the Bible. But if you take the Hebrew, it says it's now. It's in, it's in the present. He says, your God is here. It's not, he will come in the future. It's now. It's in the present. It's right as you sit here in those benches with those masks on. It's horrible. 
<laughs> I can't even see you smiling. <laughs> That's horrible. But I hope you hear, just nod your head so I can see you, you hear it. Your God is here. <laughs> Christ is here with us. And you can't believe it. Please nod your head so I can understand. <laughs> oh, I hate these masks. But even in this time, now, in 2020, He is here. And uh, may I draw more lines to prove to you that it's true? The text talks about the blossoms blooming in the desert. You just need to walk outside to see if it's true. <laughs> in St. Helena Bay. <laughs> Go look. Let it remind you of this text. It's true. It's physically true. You can pick a flower if you want and smell it if you don't believe it. The blossoms are blooming right now. He talks in this text about waters coming and the, and the rivers flowing and the dams that were dry two years ago. It's overflowing in the Western Cape. Isn't it true? <coughs> it's true. It's happening. This is the present tense. Our God is here. Jesus is here. So please look. Turn away from the masks and the horrible news and the, this virus thing and whatever. And just turn your head. See the flowers. See the dams. See the water. It's happening right here in St. Helena Bay. Our Lord is here. Now we as a church, we follow Jesus Christ. That's what we are. The church is the followers of Christ. The church are the redeemed. The church is the people, are the people that God saved. Isn't that so? That's who we are. And it's about us he's talking here. Stand up. Be, don't be feeble. Don't have feeble hands. Have, have courage. Look this horrible here in the eye and take it on. Jesus is here. I mean, that's why you came to church, isn't it? I hope so. You came to church because you know that the Lord is here. You didn't come for me, I hope. <laughs> you came for Him. You came for the Lord. To Christ, to be with Him. Even though we can't sing, at least we can listen and we can have the band sing on our behalf. But we are here. Our presence here says that we believe in Jesus Christ, the Lord, who is here. So if you look at the flowers and the dams, that's fine. But being in this church on this morning, the first time now for a long time after the lock, lock, lockdown, it, it, it witnesses to the fact that Christ is here. He's here. That's why He came. There's a message from Him. There's a message in this passage that you need to take along. He says, I am going to make a highway. He says in the passage. I'm going to make a highway. And it won't be a highway like any other highway. It's not about flowers and dams and water. This is much more spiritual. It's His highway. And it's on a level that's not, it's not a mundane level. It's a spiritual level, this highway. It's not a, it's not a type of highway where you'll find lions and, and all kinds of bad people and, and things happening there. Um, it says in the Bible that uh, the unclean will, will, will not be there. Um, wicked fools will not go on that road. You, you won't find that there. You won't find viruses on this highway either. This is the highway of the Lord. And it's the highway of faith. Of what we believe. And it's a highway of the Spirit of God. And it's a highway that will that will bring forth fruits that are different than flowers blooming. It's the fruits of love and of 
and of caring and of faithfulness and of and of love, of patience. It's the fruits of the Spirit. This is the highway he's talking about. It's the highway of his will, doing his will. I'm building this highway in you, he says, for you. Those who are chosen, the people of Israel. Through this year, this highway will run right through it. And you are part of it. And it'll bear the fruit in your heart where you can start giving. In our previous service that we've had in Afrikaans, we had some witnesses um, witnessing to what, the, what we have done in this time of tribulation, the fruit parcels and, and the, all the giving that we've done. Uh, and um, from the heart and the responses of the people that receive, saying, thank you, Lord, it's the Lord that has given it. At the, at the right time, many of those, of those testimonies will testify to it. It's at the right time. I mean, you have other welfare organizations handing out, but handing out at the right time. At El Petro or um, Safe Haven, we, we gave them a washing machine. And it was the day the washing machine broke, they, on the same day. <laughs> it just happens. So giving it is one thing, but giving it at the right time, that's the miracle. <laughs> it's, it's a highway of things happening through the Spirit. Church is going to be different from now on. Church is not just a, a service on a Sunday morning. Church is about walking on this highway every day, having the Spirit of the Lord in your heart and giving and caring and having faith and loving. That's a church. If there's one thing that this virus has taught us, it's to be different, church different, differently. We, we're getting rid of buildings and all the money things and all the mundane things we were keeping ourselves up with. It's about really walking on the highway of God. May God take your hand and lead you on this way. In the year 744 he did, BC, and in the year 2020 AD he's doing it again. Here is right, your God is here. Let's thank you. Lord, thank you for your word. Thank you that I know that you are here. We just need to see the flowers to believe it. And it's right here. Lord, you are here in this church. We have come to worship you because we know you are here. But Lord, you make a highway by which we shall live by your law of love. Help us, Lord, to walk on this highway. Fill us with your Spirit. Help us to go out of that door and each and every day be the church that you want us to be. You are here. You are with us. To you be the glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. Shall we listen to the last hymn? If you want to sing along and you can't, just lift your hands at least. Is that okay? Let's lift our hands for the Lord. <laughs>
please receive the, the blessing of the Lord. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the presence of the Holy Spirit be with each and every one of you. Amen.